Good day to my fellow gamers and fools. I am Mad Samurai 84 and I like to make bad videos on games. I hope you give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. In this video I will be giving a real review to Resident Evil Resistance. As I played from Resident Evil 3 and reviewed that game I thought it would only be right to also review the multiplayer mode given to us. So I played this game for about 10 hours and I feel like that was good enough amount of time to give an honest opinion of this game. Remember this is just my thoughts, you can disagree with me and I can disagree with you but in the end of the day we are still friends. Where to start with this game? Firstly what is Resident Evil Resistance? It is a 1v4 asymmetric online survival horror experience set in the world of Resident Evil. You can choose from seven characters known as survivors to escape three different areas from a mastermind who is trying their best to prevent you from escaping by trying to kill you or slow you down till the clock runs out by any means. Now when you read what it is and see the intro video, then do the tutorials you think wow this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm sorry to say but that is where the majority of the fun ends. I am not saying this game is utterly terrible but what I am saying is this is another great concept ruined by confusing level design, messy gameplay and among other things. Now let's talk about the good stuff. Graphically this is very good looking as it looks just like Resident Evil 3 which looked great. Controls are basically the same as well as the package's main game which is pretty good. Taking control as a mastermind is a lot of fun but it also has its problems. Being able to drop zombies to attack the survivors and then actually being able to control those zombies which I recommend you do to get the most out of the attacks before they kill it. As for which masterminds are the most fun to be I recommend playing as Annette or Daniel as they are the most fun. It gets very messy when trying to move around switching from camera to camera. Going into the map to move around the level takes you out of the action so it doesn't make the game flow at a good pace rather than really slow it down. Using the map is good to see where survivors are and keys they are looking for so you can try prepare that area for an attack but you have to be quick cause if you take too long they're gone. One of the fun parts of being a mastermind is also dropping a tyrant into the level in taking control of it. The problem is you have to control it and you can't just drop it into the level and carry on with setting traps. Now I'm not saying taking control of a tyrant sucks but it's not great. It feels like a mess and clunky when trying go after survivors, you have a better chance of attacking successfully with a zombie you take control. When the tyrant works well it's great and when it doesn't you just want to get out it a sap. Some of the masterminds are just terrible like Oswell, I played with him twice and never went back, it was just not enjoyable to be him especially when his so called tyrant is just lasers that survivors can walk around. It felt like he had nothing to use hence why I want to vote him as the shittest mastermind. Enough of the masterminds let's chat about being a survivor. This is where I feel like the game became slightly messy and where the balancing issues for players. Playing this starts off well with all the survivors together but other players don't see this as game where you have to work as one unit and that is when failure appears very quickly. As soon as you start people are off and you are on your own surrounded by overpowered zombies and you have just a bit of wood to fend them off. The level design is really boring and feels like a mess. Trying to find what is needed to get to the next level can feel very unrewarding and either not a challenge or just a challenge to make it through the drab level design and then make it back to the escape door. Also there isn't really any variation of what you do on each level, the first will be find three objects to bring back to the door to escape, the second will be kill the security zombie with the key and then go to the three stations to unlock the gate and finally destroy the three chambers of whatever goop to escape. The female characters are probably best to choose from. I personally like Becca cause of her specials. But one of the main issues here the balancing, if you play against a very high ranked mastermind and there are a lot then you are a low level survivor you do not have a chance of making it through to the next stage. 
I understand by being a higher level means you can get extra abilities and perks but it feels like you have no chance of success this game's case. In COD Warzone you can be a level 1 player still be able to kind of hold your own to certain extent and still have fun till you level up but in resistance that is not the case. The leveling up feels really hard to do and I was only able to move a couple of levels over many games using a the same character. Being a level 2 Samuel up against a rank 234 Oswell is a terrible experience. Now I did play with some high ranking survivors but it does feel like being high ranking mastermind is a bigger advantage than being a high ranking survivor. In the end this feels like a poor online experience which really sounded like a great concept at the start and was being made with all the intentions of being fun but they got lost in how to make it fun, enjoyable and fair to the player. It takes too long to get into a lobby, I have been experiencing 1 to 3 minutes to connect to 5 players. I have never got into a lobby in under a minute. What I want to know is what if one day what if you struggle to get into a game with 5 players, will they make the other survivors bots? As starting with just 2 survivors doesn't sound like a fun match. If Capcom really wanted to make interesting online game they should do a remake Resident Evil Outbreak and Outbreak File 2 and have it as an offline and online game experience where people can drop in and drop out and it doesn't affect their game. That will be fun and it make people work together instead of trying to go on their own and ruining the game for everyone. I really do hope Capcom aren't going to forget these games as they still want to throw Resident Evil 6 at us whenever they can and that game was truly rubbish. Now let's get on to giving this a real review score. I have been in two minds about what give this. Sometimes I feel like it should a 2 and then I think no maybe a 6. But it is neither of those I feel the most appropriate score for this game would be 4 out of 10. Some people will think I'm being too harsh but this game isn't worth giving to us. I would have rather not have any multiplayer and have more content and experience with Resident Evil 3 as that already a very short game as it is. It is like they thought Resistance would make up for it being too short well Capcom it didn't. I made sure to delete the game off my hard drive as soon as I was finished with it as it is not worth keeping on my hard drive cause I know I will never have a urge to go back to it. Now I have given my real review on Resident Evil Resistance I better get back to making other bad videos. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video. Stay safe and recycle properly.